I born in 1961 in Iraq. I was the oldest son in the family, so I should be with my father and working in the shop. My father was deaf. He couldn't read or write, so I was his translator. And I was always drawing and sculpting and, and painting. My family wasn't so happy about it because their dream it was I should be an architect. One day I come and told them I need to be an artist. They asked me if I was a gay. <laughs> I told them no. So they say, oh no. So you will be a heist. So I keep it in secret, drawing. When I was 14 years old, men come and cut me and took me away. Man, it was from government. In Iraq, government could do whatever they like. They asked me about if, if I have seen uh, any letters from Freedom Fighter asking my father for the money, which I didn't know. So they beat me in the beginning, and they began to torture me. In Iraq, when they tortured you, they are very hard. They don't kill you, but they are very hard. They give you electric shock. They broken your finger and they take off your nails. So I passed out, and my capture, they thought I couldn't take it. So they bring older men, and they tortured him, found me. And before they released me, they told me, if you talk about it, we will kill you. This is normal, they do it in Iraq. And I never told my family about it, because I was afraid, and I thought, this is my problem. Worst thing in it, I feel really lonely. I couldn't tell anybody about what's happening with me, even my family. So I kept drawing because only friend I have it, it was my pencil and my brush. This is only friend I have it. I could talk with them, tell them my history without a word. Even I keep it face and warm with me. Every night I sleep, I have it with me because I was so afraid of my best friends. A year after Freedom Fighter meet me, everybody, like a Kurdish in Iraq, should fight against the government. This is a very normal. And I need a revenge. So, and I was very good asset for them because I could liberate, so I could know anything about what's happening in the town. In Iraq from 70s to 90s, Iraqi government need to have control of everything. So they have secret agent everywhere. And I was the man who could find these people because I could liberate. And Iraqi government didn't like my town, which, which I come from, because most of the people was a Kurdish and it was an oil town. So they kicked most of the people out of the city. But they couldn't do with us because my family was rich and we had the shop. And they bring an Arab took over. And I was very sad about it. So I make an exhibition about the black crow stealing the corpse and taking over the land. They wasn't so happy about it. So they tortured me all the night. Still, I couldn't tell my family about it. Later, I come to the Art Academy in Baghdad. It was closed university. Closed university, it means only the people working with the government have a right to this education, which I wasn't. So they wasn't so happy about me. And later, they need all the students being a national guard. And I denied it, so they kicked me out. And when they kick you out from university, so you have going to be a soldier. We had a war between an Iraq and Iran. And if you are late just five days, even your neighbor have a right to shoot you in the street. So I wasn't run. Luckily me, I had my skills. I could fake any paper I needed because I could draw it. I need just a piece of potatoes and a special pen. 
So any stamp in Iraq I could do it. So I was in run in one year, go through all the checkpoint with fake paper. I have fake paper everywhere. Anytime they ask, I have one of it. <laughs> so in this way, it was very hard. So later I decided to run to the mountain with the freedom fighter. From there, I crossed the border to Iran. And when I come to Iran, I have to tell different identity. But later they found that I have been freedom fighter. So they asked me if I need to be a, a part of Islamic Revolution Guard. So I could fight against Saddam Hussein, which I wasn't interested in. So they kept me 11 months captive in, in the camp. And every day I try to find a way how I should run from there. And still I was working with my art. I used whatever I could find. I carved all my sculptures in soap. And one day I draw my queen of the jungle. And the guard saw it because I draw one breast. And they say, that is erotic. You don't have a right to make any erotic hair. So they kept me one month in solitary confinement. And after one month, I came out, I say, I was lucky I didn't draw both of them. <laughs> so I decided I should run from there. So I make new fake paper and run from the camp to University of Tehran, which I had my father's friend there. He could help me run from Iran. And there he, he set up a meeting with the captain of uh, uh, airplane and uh, officer. So they helped me, I should run from Iran to Vienna. When I reached Vienna, I had all these fake paper with me. So it was very hard. So I hide two days in toilet. It's the only thing I do, I change the toilet sometime because it was somebody cleaning toilet. So I didn't need to recognize I am there for many hours. So later, few few minutes before my departure to, to East Berlin, I came down. The stuff actually helped me run through so I could not lose my, my airplane. So I, I landed in, in, in uh, East Berlin. I wasn't so lucky. The officer found it very fast. It was fake, everything, what I have it. So they interviewed me for four hours and asked me why I have faith paper. So I told them I run from jail, from Iraq and Iran, and I need to be a refugee. So they looked at my bag and found some of my drawing. They asked me if, uh, if it was mine. I told them yes. They say, okay, you have a two minute decide where you need to go. I asked them what's my option. They say, where's Berlin, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway? I say, Denmark. So they say, okay, you have 24 hours. We give you a visa for free. And if we catch you after this one, we will send you back. I told them, just I need a one hour. This is it. <laughs> so I run very fast to Denmark. In my, in my way to, to Denmark, I thought, this is it. I am coming to freedom. And I hope it for a long time. I say, I hope I never been jailed because I always have been an artist and not a criminal. First, I come to Denmark, I told them, all the papers, the fake, this is not my name. I need my name back because this is what I fight for. It. I don't know why, they bring four huge officers with a dog, and they took me away without a word. So all the way I was in the car, I, was, I thought, if they send me back, I will become suicide here. I can't go back. Because if they send me back, they will hang me very fast. And suddenly I find myself with two of them in a very dark room. And they showed to me I should take all my clothes. So I took my clothes, but I keep my underwear. And they showed I should take this one too. And I was really embarrassed, so I took it off. And suddenly they give me a piece of soap. I hold it, I really didn't understand what's meaning with this soap. They say you should take a shower. <laughs> I, I really was so shocked, I didn't know why I should take a shower. So I took a shower very fast, and they gave me a jail clothes and took me to another room. And all the night, I was thinking, if they try tomorrow send me back, I will become suicide, doesn't matter what, because I can't go back now. And next day, I find myself in the course. 
And what should, so was strange for me, the judge was, was a woman. And I never have seen judge a female in my life. So she gave me six months jail until they find my really identity. I was very happy because they sent me to jail in Denmark <laughs> and not back to Iraq. So in jail, it was very exciting for me because I never have seen officer in jail say good morning. <laughs> and you like a tea or coffee? <laughs> Which food you can like? I thought that was really strange for me. <laughs> so after 25 days, they have a meeting with me. Police say, this is very strange. You have been 25 days in jail. You never have been angry. You never have talked with lawyer. You just go around and painting and drawing. It's like it's a home. <laughs> I told them, because you need some paper, and Iraqi government never will send you this paper. So why I should phone my lawyer? Because I know he needs this paper, and I can't find this paper. And say, are you not angry? I say, for what? They say, you are in jail. I say, this is jail. It looked like three stars hotel in Middle East. <laughs> So I don't have a problem. <laughs> after, after some time, they find an old uh, school friend, actually from Odense. He could prove my identity. So they freed me very fast. And I never, ever forget what the officer told me when he helped me. I come out. He say, I hope one day you make me proud being an artist in Denmark. So I, I decided to go went to design school. Because my doctor found out about it, I couldn't use my six finger. So they told me you should work with your fingers. So I took a ceramic class in design school. But I keep it secret because I was scared they will kick me out if they know I am, really can use my six fingers. So I, all this time I fight. And like I told you before, it's worse things. You are really lonely. Even you winning, you can't tell anybody about it. And I have worked very long time with using my finger. And when you make a ceramics, so you should use your finger. And I couldn't feel six of them. I could feel only four. So sometimes I use my body. Nobody notices. And I keep working. Sometimes I use my body for, for making my stuff. And when I make one good thing, so I make the next and the next and so on. One time I make an exhibition, Princess Alexandra should open it. It was for rehabilitation center in Denmark. And I wasn't part of it. I was surprised the manager, when I was hanging my stuff, he asked me why I shouldn't come to treatment. It was shocking for me how he knew it, I feel not good. Later I found that somebody actually have sent him a letter about me. And I told him, no, nothing is problem. I feel my finger, I have a very good job. And that is it. I don't need to come to a rehabilitation center. But it wasn't true. Actually, every day I wake up, I thought about suicide. Because most of my friends die suicide, so I was only back. And I couldn't still talk, don't talk about my problems. Everybody around me thought, this is perfect. Everything is OK. I look very good. I'm working very good. But really, I was devastated. And I have a big problem. One of my friends think differently. She faked my paper for the first time. Normally, I do it, but she done it. <laughs> she sent application for rehabilitation center. A year after, suddenly come letter for me, say, we proved your application, which I didn't know anything about it. But I feel very embarrassed if I don't do it, because my friend fight for me. So I accepted there in two months. I didn't believe anything, because normally, I don't believe miracles. But one thing they told me changed my life, actually. They say, look here, we never ever can change your past. One thing we can do here, help you live with your past. So that is this changed many things for me. In 2010, Iraqi government need give a three gift to Denmark for the queen, premier minister, and foreign ministry. They choose my art. I make a, this ball, this is a copy of the Queen's ball. So I will talk to you about this one. I make this from with two birds. This bird is rock partridge. Maybe people think this is only nice bird. But this is a 
a special bird. This is a very hard bird in mountain, which they love with us like a freedom fighter. They can actually eat stones if they can find a food. So it's remind me about myself. And when they sing in the morning, that's what they do. It feel like waking up all the freedom fighter. So that's why I make this one. This actually it was forbidden in Iraq, make this bird in painting or making sculptures of it. And always I have some pearls with it. With these pearls, you can see your words. That's what I do. This is a, about happiness and luck and best wishes hatching from the egg of the bird. So my message is not my word. It is my art. Thank you.